1006. For the sake of time, we want to go ahead and get started. So thank you again to Angie Ravenel to, uh, for joining us today with Southern Crescent Women in Business. Um, our session today is the Product Masterclass for Women-Owned Businesses, Building Strategies, Confidence to Build Your Business. It is a part of our Secure the Bag Strategies and Series. Um, Angie Ravenel has been really successful in getting her products to major retailers, and she's going to talk a little bit about that today. But for those who do not know who I am, I am Ariel Shaw, founder and president of Southern Crescent Women in Business. And this is Southern Crescent Women in Business, where we are a conglomerate of women-owned businesses and women in business, and what we have identified as the Southern Crescent or South Atlanta. Angie Ravenel has been in the beauty industry for 20 plus years, along with being sought after stylist. She's an author, she's an educator, she's a makeup artist, a salon owner, a product manufacturer, and a photographer. <laughs> she's a veteran, veteran in the beauty industry. Angie has traveled the states educating and networking with fellow hairstylists and saw the need to create her own educational platform. Kudos to you. Um, and I, I saw that. Um, and so tell, tell us a little bit, one, about who you are. Um, talk to us a little bit about your educational platform, because I think that's brilliant in creating your own um, CE courses and yes. having people come to you. And then talk a little bit about what your journey is as far as being able to get your products. One, the creation of it. And two, getting it to scale where you're able to now have what we call is make money in your sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. I like how you said that. Very true. <laughs> All right. I'm turning it on over to you. All righty. Well, first of all, again, I'm Angie Ravenel. I am located in the Charleston, South Carolina area. So I'm not too far from um, Ariel and probably the most of you, most of you all out there. I've been in a beauty industry now, instead of me saying 20 plus years, I am going to say 30. So 30 years. And every time I say that, I am I'm really proud of that because it, it has been a journey. Uh, needless to say, I have been a salon owner for 25 years, so that's where a lot of my experience came in at, and it just kind of completed this full circle of um, any and everything involved in the beauty industry, the photography, the makeup artistry, uh, set designing, being a salon owner, the products. To me, all those things go together. I'm just completing a circle, so that's how I tend to look at it, and the, it, it sounds like a lot, but it actually goes out, it goes together, okay? So last November, I ended up closing my salon of 25 years due to the unfortunate pandemic. I couldn't work in there due, due to health reasons. I kept it open for the girls who was working in there. And then it just got to the point, kept it for over a year during the pandemic that I decided to close it just so I can focus on other endeavors. So I already had uh, my product line uh, going, you know, at that time. And during the pandemic, or right before the pandemic, rather, back in uh, 2018, I was educating. I was traveling and educating um, who anybody who would have me at their schools, more so in the beauty industry. And um, it started being CE courses. And for those of you who don't know, CE courses are courses that people in the beauty industry need in order to renew their professional license. So I was teaching those classes for other um, entities, so to speak. And I would, and at the end of the class, they would have to rate the class. And I would always get five stars, five stars, straight across the board from all these uh, participants. And people would tell me, you ever thought about doing it yourself or whatever? And I was like, well, no, I didn't really give it much thought because I was so busy teaching in other people's uh, schools. Long story short, I decided to uh, build, create and build Excel Continuing Education. And yes, we are a CE provider for the uh, South Carolina area along with Washington, DC. And we also have some participants from uh, Chicago. And um, we also have career development courses 
on there as well. And last but not least, my newest course on there is uh, creates a winning online course. So now throughout all the requests, I can now teach others how they too can have their online course, no matter their niche. Rather, they are an accountant, a, a lawyer, a realtor, a cook, a baker, whatever it is, I'm able to now teach others how they too can create their online course. So back to what Ariel was saying, that allows me to build my digital assets. And what I mean by that, which I think is very important to build digital assets, because that's the way everything is going. Keep in mind, when the pandemic occurred, everything was online. School was online. So that's when I really jumped in and that's when it really soared. It just took off because everybody was stuck at home. So anyway, that's Excel Continuing Education. And throughout that time, before that, I uh, when I was in the salon, I came up with my first product, my first baby, which was uh, Quick Clean Hair Mist. And I developed this product. I actually sat with a chemist told her exactly what I wanted. I told her, hey, I'm, I I'm filling in this gap. I'm filling in this gap in the beauty industry because again, I'm standing behind the salon chairs and I was able to listen to my customers. There wasn't anything out there that can quickly clean their hair or shampoo their hair and condition it while on the go, whereas they didn't have the time or didn't really fully want to fully shampoo their hair. So I created Quick Clean Hair Mist. So it, just like I said, it cleans your hair and scalp. It's a no rinse, waterless shampoo and conditioner. You just spray, you wipe clean and you go. So I developed this product. It was nothing on the market like this product. And then after a while, I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I sat on it for a little while. And um, I have a friend of mine, we became friends throughout this time. And she had a product. And I said, you know what, if anything, I'm going to converse with her and see if maybe she can just spare me in the right direction. So I told her, she's like, wait, you already got a product already ready? And I said, yeah, I already slept with the chemist. I got it in a bottle. It's raring to go. I just don't know what route I want to take. And um, so with that being said, she said, you need to uh, apply for Walmart. Walmart got this summit coming up. And I was like, Walmart? I mean, she, we went from A to Z in my mind, because here it is. I just got, you know, I'm little old me and I got this product. And she was like, Walmart has a summit. Matter of fact, I think the deadline is coming up. You need to apply. So I did. I applied and I got accepted. And they wanted to hear more about my product. And my husband and I, we, we, we loaded up the car. We drove from South Carolina to Bentonville, Arkansas. Now that's really far away. But we drove there, you know, I'm new to this and I got all these hopes and everything. And I was able to sit with a buyer, one-on-one -on -one with a buyer. And I gave him my whole spiel and he loved it. And they started me with the walmart.com and I was with them for about a year. And then I escalated and then I got on the store shelves, working with Walmart, letting them know that I was ready. They could see that I was ready. And um, so I, I got it out there and I was selling it online. Again, I'm learning a lot at the same time because this is not my realm, so to speak. I'm, I'm new at this. So there was so much to learn while conducting business. So with that being said, a little more time went by and then I decided to add on to my product line, which now I have a shampoo, I have a conditioner, I have a... a hair growth oil, um, you know, with along with Quick Clean Hair Mist, my original product. And I decided to take a different route from Walmart and to sell it myself online. So I started doing that for a while. And then I, uh, Amazon had this commercial going on that they were uh, looking for Black businesses to be a part of some sort of program. And I, they kept on playing this commercial, kept on playing the commercial. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to apply for this. And I got accepted. And now I'm with Amazon. And I really love my journey uh, with Amazon. 
They have been very helpful. It's stressful on another end of it all, but they have been very helpful uh, with, with uh, getting my products out there even more so. So that's really good information. Um, so what I want to know a little bit more, um, and, and ladies, please feel free to put anything in the chat that you have questions. I know I'm getting texts. Make sure you okay, put it open in, up the, the in the too. chat. Um, but let me let me ask you this. So we went from product development with your chemist. Now, does it matter? because we're, you know, the pandemic, we put a little bit of a, a little bit of a strain on supplier, you know, yes. chain issues. Has that in any way impacted, you know, your ability to manufacture and be able to provide the products? And that's the first part. And then the second part is what is the benefit of having these products available? You know, and I know the, I know the answer, but I want you to say, these these products available in multiple markets because as we know Amazon's huge, um, Walmart's huge. So those that may not be visiting your site, mm -hmm. you know, talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, first, supply. Um, to me, luckily, so supply never became an issue with me. Now, again, you know, I put in my orders with my manufacturer or whatever, and then you have to wait, you know, nothing happens overnight. And I am on a smaller scale, maybe than some of their other people who they co-pack for. Okay. So you just, I, you know, that wasn't a problem for, for me as far as supply and, and demand, you know, so I was able to readily get my product and I have Amazon uh, sending my products out to my customers. So I don't send my products out to my customers. Amazon does. And what that's called is FBA, Fulfillment by Amazon. So if you see that out there, now you know what it means. So that really helped me. I could have done it myself, but I'm at a point in my career and in my life, I just want to continue just to shoot for the stars. If you get what I'm saying, I, I've done Walmart. I've done it where I was mailing it out myself because I was on walmart.com. That's one way of doing it. So now I feel as though I've escalated. I've, I've climbed a little bit higher um, on my ladder, so to speak, because I have my own ladder that I'm continuously climbing for myself. And Amazon was that next step. Being so, they are the largest retailer online in the world, okay? So that's the reason why I, I took that route. And I'm trying to think the next question you had in mind was um, why, why that particular market, Amazon? Okay, that, but reason, okay, so the way I look at it, Ariel, and is that people are already on Amazon to shop. So to me, I skipped a lot of the, not that I, I advertise on Facebook and, and Instagram and, and all those other entities, don't get me wrong. But again, when you're doing that, you're having to pull them off of that platform. If they're scrolling and they see you, you have to pull them off of that platform to go to another platform. So the conversion is a little slower. OK, so and I did that and I'll continue to do that. But now with Amazon, let's think about it, ladies. I don't know who's all on the, the, the panel right now, ladies and maybe gentlemen. Um, people are on Amazon to shop. You know, they love Prime. I'm a Prime member. So my products are Prime. You get it in a couple of days. And I just felt that was vital at this point in my career with my product. So that's why I took that route. That's really good. Um, and, and I'm really glad that you mentioned um, the conversion. <laughs> Woo. Conversion. I, 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 I really think that's um, really important because what people have to understand is if I'm already on Amazon, I'm there hmm. with a purpose to spend money. <laughs> And, yes. and they can reach a market that I absolutely cannot on my own. 
um, first of all, they're not just nationwide, but they're worldwide. worldwide. In addition to the fact that, um, you know, again, that conversion, why send someone to another site if they're already there to spend money? Exactly. Um, extremely important. Very so, important. And their card information is already in there. Right. They're already a prime member. So, you know, they're serious shoppers. Right. That's you know, good. being, you know, they, they paying to shop to have that stuff shipped to them in a timely manner. So I'm a part of that, uh, that platform. And it's, it's really powerful. It's really powerful. Now, granted, it just doesn't happen. You know, there's still strategies you need to take. Keep in mind, we did say it's the largest online retailer in the world. So I am not the only one. So I am competing against a lot of other uh, people out there. So I got to make sure things are attractive, it's appealing. Uh, I do ads on there as well to try to get me, you know, on the, a higher page on the first or second page of searching and things like that. So just because you're on Amazon doesn't mean it's just going to happen. You still have your struggles throughout, like with anything, but I feel as though I minus out one of the other struggles is to pull people from one platform onto another. Very good. Um, there is a question. Um, is Amazon in direct contact with your manufacturer to order inventory? Or are you still in charge of your inventory? I am still in charge of my inventory. Now, for those of you all, again, I don't know who I'm, I'm speaking to and what steps of, of this process that you're in. Certain manufacturers will send your products to Amazon for you. Um, I haven't gotten to that right to that part. I am still in control of uh, sending my products out to Amazon. Okay. Is there a is there a um, legal or um, financial reason why you would go that route? Um, meaning you want to maybe have more control over product or how, how, what does that look like? Uh, not so much financially. I think it's a more of a control thing. Um, you know, I'm not taking baby steps. I'm making big leaps, but that's something I'm going to eventually do. Now, one thing I wanted to say why is because sometimes, and I'm not to each his own, when you don't have certain powers or abilities within your company, within your website, within your products, you tend to not know what's going on, okay? So I'm willing to learn. So this process, I'm labeling, I'm shipping, I'm packaging, I know how to pack it, I know where to send it, I'm getting familiar with their, their dashboard, uh, Seller Central, is, is that's what it's called. So if I was to bring in somebody, I have the know-how. I'm not so dependent on that person or that person could just tell me whatever. And I'm just like, oh, OK, because I don't know. So call it controlling. I don't know, but it works in my favor. So I always suggest even when Bill, I just had a consult the other day with somebody and she didn't know really anything about her site. And I was telling her, I said, well, you know what? Try to take some time to go in the back end of it and learn some things yourself. That's how I operate. I love that. I think that's really smart. And, you know, for those who don't know, I'm originally from Charleston. So she's my Charleston sister. <laughs> Did not know that. Listen, and, and listen, and we, and that's how we operate. We, you know, we, we got to know what's going on. In the oh, business. yes. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we got to know. <laughs> So um, are there any other questions? I really think this was really good. Um, is there a way you can give um, a little bit more information on maybe timeline as it takes to maybe develop product and get it to, you know, on the shelves? Like, yes. what does that time frame look like? And again, people are at different stages. So, you know, um, I know one of the individuals, you know, asking a question, they already have product. They already have a manufacturer. It's just, I guess, a matter of where do they put it? So right now, um, I believe they only sell it on online or in their um, space. Uh -huh. um, what would you recommend for, for that? They're very good question. I, I was hoping we, we got to that. So back to 
where, you know, for those who don't have a product, let's just back up here a little bit. Just different ways of gaining a product. For me, I went the route of first, especially my first product, which is this product here, Quick Clean Hair Mist, of hiring a, a chemist, okay? So you can do that and it's, it's not cost effective in no way if, if that's what you know you wanting to do. However, what I do want to mention to you all who desire to have your own product is there are such things as white labeling, private labeling, and wholesaling. So what those three things does is allow you to have that product. So let me just real quick. So white labeling is uh, great for is somebody else's product that build the product for you or the base of the product. And then you are you can add to it. Then you can put your name on it. There's a lot of companies out there that do it. I suggest you test them out. Really see how they conduct business, their shipping, their professionalism. Really do you, you got to try the product. Do you like the product? No matter what it is, there's candles, people, uh, uh, car, tire shine stuff. A lot of people white and private label their products. And then they able to take that base formula, add a little bit more of this, add a little bit more. I want a little bit more shine. I want a little bit more scent. You're able to do that, okay? And then you can put your branding and your name on it. Now let's talk about wholesaling. Sometimes you don't need to have your very own product, okay? Sometimes you don't need to invent the wheel. It's already invented. You can actually uh, be selling, I'm just gonna say iPhone cases, okay? And so that's when you can get it wholesale, but it's underneath your umbrella. Your company is selling it. So don't think you have to be innovative all the time. It's a great thing, don't get me wrong, but there's other ways of going about uh, creating your own product. The only thing is with that, you have to do your research and development. You have to seek out uh, the right partner for you because of, believe it or not, you may say, I'm so independent. Um, I own 100% of my com company, which is fine, or your LLC, but whoever your man manufacturer is, is actually a partner, okay? So you and that person or that company needs to be on, on one accord and you need to share your uh, dreams and what your expectations are with that manufacturer as well. So that's really, really important. Turnaround time. That's really on you, how fast you want to scale or if you just want to take your time. So let's say you go the private label route and let's say it's candles. Well, what I would do, I would go on there and find five to six different kinds. You like what they do, what they don't do. Some are very specific on their website. You want to look for things like that. Is it easy to order? The biggest key point with all this is minimal orders. Some people will say, in order to purchase from us, we need you to purchase 10,000 units, units meaning each piece, okay? So that's what a unit is. So you're like, man, I'm just getting started. If I purchase 10,000 units, that's going to cost me probably 30, 40,000 just to get started. So definitely look at their minimums, okay? Like, most, you would hopefully find someone who knows that these are small people trying to get started who cannot afford 50,000 units, okay? Now, somebody like a uh, uh, Glade, <laughs> you know, another candle company, I mean, they probably ordering at a million pieces for all we know, but keep in mind, so definitely don't get too caught up with someone and then a minimals are too high, whereas then you can't afford it. So that's a, a definitely thing, a good thing to look out for. Okay, that's really good. Um, we had somebody with their hand raised. Um, I keep on dropping my mouse, you guys. I don't hear that. Um, okay, if you, if you had your hand raised, if you could just put it in the question and answer section or either in the chat, that'll be fine. Um, Stephanie, great information. She has a product as well. And this was very helpful. Um, okay. Another question. How do you get your product visible amongst all the products? Is there a minimum to start? And I believe, um, they're talking specifically about Amazon. Okay. Uh, so let me back up just a little bit. A couple of things that I want you guys to do is, um, if, if you don't mind me mentioning Google, uh, Ario, okay. that's okay. You can set up. That's okay? No, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. 
<laughs> I don't want to overstep my boundaries here. I'm a guest. So you have this thing called Google Alerts, right? And I suggest this for any and everybody. I have that set up on, on my devices. And what Google Alerts does is you type in what you want Google to send to you. Google is going to alert you on whatever it is that you put in. So you can put in uh, business grants, uh, Black-owned target, uh, Black-owned accelerated program, whatever it is. And so you will be constantly updated when, when, when that information comes live. Google will alert you. It's really easy to set up, okay? Google alert, look it up. All right, so there are programs out there that can help you along the way. You know, unfortunately, with all the, the crime that was going on, George Floyd and, and things like that, a lot of the bigger manufacturers really saw the need or really saw us in a different light that, hey, these people are already starting off as a disadvantage. Let's do something that's going to help them, all right? So a lot of people came up with these programs or whatever that you're able to jump in. Amazon does have a Black Accelerator program. My understanding is they're really busy and they're short on staff with that, but I suggest looking it up. Who knows, okay? And within that program, they're able to help you along the way. Again, you still got to do the work. You still got to strategize, you know, your labeling and, and all that stuff is on you. They're not going to do any of that on you. They just going to give you a, a more of a little platform uh, to deliver what it is that you're trying to put out there. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. So be a part of know, organizations. Um, that's one of the things we mentioned as well. So with George Floyd and what we're, what they actually now call social justice, there has been a ton of um, money poured in um, or coming from, I should say, corporate America um, as it relates to Black-owned businesses. And there is a question from Gloria Riley. Um, I'm going to allow you to talk. Are you able to go ahead? I think she's muted. Okay, hold on. You have to unmute. Go ahead, Gloria. Hi, Gloria. <laughs> okay, Gloria, I think you're <laughs> unmuted. I'm not sure if you know that um, how to. All right. If you if you want, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. I'm I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but um, well, yeah. I have the chat open. I can see the questions as well. Okay, they're coming in the question and answer section. Can you see that? Oh, okay. Let me uh. Like okay. I don't know what's going on with this thing. Gloria, are you able to speak? We can't hear you. There we are. Okay. Question and answers. Got it. All right. Okay. Well, this has really been great. Um, we, we've talked about Google alerts. Um, that's, that's a good, <laughs> I, I always tell people to put it on their name for branding purposes. <laughs> oh, I do. Yeah. If somebody, cause I just had a story just released, uh, on black nation, uh, blacknews.com. And so I wanted to know if anyone <clears throat> else picked up that story. So I put right. my name again in, right. in Google alerts. So Exactly. All right. It says the chat is disabled. I'm sorry, guys. Go ahead and put it in your the the question section. Um. All right. If there are no more questions, oh, I, I know we um. Can you talk a little bit about the 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 timeline? That that's the part that we we missed. How long it took to get the product, the manufacturer, and then actually get it onto the shelves. What's well, let's, let's go back to my first product, Quick Clean um, uh, Hair Mist. Again, I sat on it for a little while. You know, I, so that formulation part, my research and development, I would say taking the time to get with someone, going back and forth with the formula, maybe about, for me now, this is my journey, a year. I'm just particular in that way because I knew what I would, you know, it's new. Nobody had this formula. So 
I had to be very, very innovative. So that took about a year, give or take. And then once I got the okay with Walmart, then that was about a three month period of finally getting it on walmart.com. So it's not an overnight success. Now, what may be faster for you all if you decide to go the private labeling uh, route? Because again, those base formulas are there already, whether it's like I said, a candle or a tire shine or whatever it is, and you're able to work with that manufacturer to add this or to take away that and then getting with a good label person to put uh, your label on there, getting your UPC code and, and, and things like that. So that's my journey on how, how long it took to get started. I okay. hope I'm answering it the way you yeah. got it. Um, okay. And that's because you created your own product versus yes. the white labeling um, and that's because really you're a hairstylist. So <laughs> you have very particular things that you wanted in there versus someone who just says, I want a product to, to go ahead and push out. Exactly. Um, right. And one um, thing I want to say too, is mm -hmm. the, the private label and the white labeling in the wholesale arena is humongous. You guys, there are a lot of Names that you see as you go in Walgreens and CVS, and that's what they're doing. Those are their cold packers. Those are their manufacturers, and they probably work with them a little bit more and make some little changes here and there. But some people, when I mentioned it before, they were proud of that. That's not like having my own. Yes, it is. It, it really is. There's so many formulas out there and so many people that, that does that, that very, very successful. So you don't have to have a manufacturing company is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, for your manufacturers, is there ever, um, are you able to negotiate with them almost on like a net 30 um, situation or is it always um, you need to order and you need to pay in advance before you get your product? Exactly. Like, and that's any, what that, go ahead. Yeah, is there any, is there any um, negotiation um, skills that you could possibly use to maybe, you know. <laughs> well, the only thing I can say is Shark Tank, right? I'm a big Shark Tank person. I watch the reruns and everything. Now, keep again, keep in mind that when you're new, it's an unfortunate thing, but you're not taken as seriously, okay? Just keeping it real here. But if you come in with a plan of execution, and in hopes of this person backing you to some degree, the, the, you know, the net 30 or, or whatever it is, then maybe you can have more leverage with that, with that company. Now, that's where your research and development come in. That's when you're really, you're vetting all these people to see if they are able to work with you, okay? Now, I hear some people say, I start off with, without any money. I can't say that. I can't. I'm not going to put here and fluff it and you can do it and no money is needed. That that was in the case for me. It, it can be a minimal amount of money depending on who you decide to go with because the minimal amount is feasible for you. So they may say, hey, Ariel, we can start you off with 100 pieces of, of eyeshadows or, or whatever. And you're like, now, I can, I can fork that type of money up along with my labeling and, and whatever else goes with that and your marketing and stuff like that as well. So as far as negotiations, now, if you come there and you adding onto your product line and you got sales out the yin yang and you have a, you are proven business, you have a proven platform, I think people would lend the ear more and work with you. Absolutely. Um, a question. Can you talk about the PR for your business? <laughs> Whew, that's a hard one. I do a lot of my own PR. Um, I'm, I'm just creative in that, in that kind of way. I do bring along help uh, in my office with uh, Excel Continuing Education because there are certain times of the year that we get extremely bus busy. Not only do they help me with the back end work, they help me with some of my PR as well. 
And, um, but for the most part, I do a lot of my public relations, uh, the write up that I just got uh, with Black News, I forgot, the Black Nation or Black News um, was on my own, on my own accord. Um, I was featured throughout my years in the cosmetology realm. I was featured in numerous magazines, international, national, and local magazines, time and time again. Every month I'm, I'm being featured, my styles, my makeup, my photography. But I was the one who was breaking down those doors calling people, hey, you you guys need to know about me. I'm that person. So yeah, I I do that. <laughs> but it's great if you got a PR person that can help you along the way. I do know somebody, you know, so. All right, guys. Um, and listen, we have Southern Crescent Women in Business Magazine. We do, you know, media sponsors as well. So if you're awesome. looking to get pushed out a little bit more, um, there, there are ways, um, but, um, there was, I think one more question. I don't know. Did we get all our questions? Let me see if I can see any of them. I think we did. I think we got all the questions. Um, we, we touched on white labeling. We touched on private labeling. We touched on manufacturing, um, um, Amazon, mm -hmm. Amazon. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, and Let's see if well, I have anything in my notes too, because I got to. Okay, yeah, marketing is definitely marketing is key with every business, guys. I don't care what you do. <laughs> yeah, you have to market your business. Um, okay. And use all your platforms out there. And if you want to take it serious in anything you do, there's nothing wrong with using all of your platforms. I have personal and I have business. But I'm the type of person, I'm going to mix them all up. Even on my personal, I'm going to throw some business stuff on there. People are vetting you to see if they want to support you too. So be mindful of what you're putting out there on your uh, social platforms. Yeah, absolutely. Because you are your brand. <laughs> you are your brand. And people are looking and they deciding if they want to work with you. Um, I did have one more question. So okay. how did you, so you mentioned that you met with Walmart and then they decided from that point, they wanted to work with you. What did you do that you feel stood out to them? Because this was before George Floyd. Cause I remember when George Floyd. Yeah. I remember when you actually started. So when, T tell us a little bit about how you actually were able to stand out to this big box brand that they said, okay, I'm, I'm interested. Well, thankfully, so they, they put me in, well, like when I went to Bentonville to the, the summit and keep in mind, you guys, it is crowded. People are walking around with their products, some big, some small, you know, so it was intimidating uh, again, because this is so new to me. And I, I went in, I, I was able to sit in this glass room with this buyer, and this was his realm, health and beauty. And I went in and I just really expressed to him how I differentiate from others. I told him there's no other product like mine on the market. It's innovative and it's needed and it's wanted. And I sold it. I, I sold it to him. And I also... Uh, sprayed it on his hair. <laughs> I did. He had a lady come in. He was like, you know, I got to see this product work. So he had his associate or whatever come in and we sprayed it and had a towel and wiped clean. And she's like, oh my God, this feels so great. And you know, their comments was, was very, very, very good. And I basically, I went in and I, I gave it my all, even though I was so new to this, but I knew what my product could do. I stood behind my product. And that what helps people can really tell if you stand behind something and if you know when something works, like my, my shampoos and conditioner, I can tell you any and everything about it because I stand behind it. I know it detangles. I know it moisturizes like no other. It's perfect for curly hair. And I can say that with intention because I know it works. So that really helps when you really stand behind something. They can see that. Absolutely. That's amazing. So there's confidence, <laughs> confidence, boldness, and you were able to actually um, give them a taste of the product. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. And then oh even God. before that, during the lunchtime, they stopped me. They were interviewing people before I even spoke to a buyer. 
And I made it on their uh, morning show in, in Benninville. And the guy just off the spot, he just, tell me, why are you here? And I was like, okay, I, I look, I, I can't, other people will fail you, but I can't be the one that failed myself. Okay, so I just had to push through. I was nervous, but I just had to push through. And I, you all can do the same thing. I know you can. So. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. All right, ladies. Well, listen, I don't know how you uh, others are starting their Tuesday mornings, but <laughs> Southern Crescent. What a Tuesday. <laughs> well, Southern I hope Christmas. I inspired you guys. And uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, check out the products, the Ravenel products. Absolutely. It's out there. And All right. It, are there any other questions, any other comments, guys? Put it in the question and answer section. Sorry, I know the chat's disabled, y'all. Um, I don't know why it's disabled, but um, bottom line is if there are no more questions, we definitely want to thank Angie Ravenel for coming on this platform this morning. Um, this will be recorded and we will place it up on our YouTube channel as well, which also feeds into our Women Live channel, which is available on Amazon. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah, we, very good. We I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do that live thing too. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking into that. But can I say something else really quick? Yes, yes, sure. I'm sorry. Another thing when you try to get with these manufacturers is ask for samples. I wanted to say that that's really important because sometimes they have a packet, so to speak, where they, again, candles, tire shine, I keep on going back, hair products, and that you can buy samples of. So now you've got samples coming in from six or seven entities. And also be aware of the trends. If you really fast and forthcoming, you can get on the trends. But if, if there's something that's going to take a little bit of time, you feel that you're dropping, jumping in on the trend and then the trend goes away and here you are, you stuck with these products. So keep that in mind. Okay, that that did spark another question. Okay. How do you feel about um, pre-orders? I'm big about pre-orders. Um, I think that's, and, and I don't know if that's something that you've done in, in your space, but I mean, people do it these days with books. They do it with products. They do it with a lot of things has have you ever used the the process or that particular strategy of pre-orders and how has that assisted you yes now i just recently did a pre-order when we launched create a winning online course and that's the course that's going to help whoever whatever niche create their own online course so during the process of me developing this i mean it's it's a 14 module uh course I didn't want to wait till, hey, it's done. I'm ready. It's ready to order. And then, you know, crickets, right? So I started talking about it before it's ready, okay? And then once I did that, I started putting out a pre-order form, so to speak, and they got a, a, a certain discount or whatever I did at the time because they were, quote, unquote, the early birds, okay? So yes, pre-ordering, especially if you already been working on branding yourself, you got a, a great name out there, so to speak. A lot of people know you. You're already a salon owner. You got a following. If you got that following, and if they really believe in you, pre-ordering is is a is a great thing to do, and it's gonna help you know. It's gonna allow you to know that you got something. So if you notice these pre-orders and people are waiting and they're really uh, excited about it. It lets you know to keep on moving forward. Sometimes you have to test the market before it's even ready because it's nothing worse than you coming up with something. And unfortunately, people aren't really interested in it. And I, I've seen that happen. Oh my God. I feel like this is an amen corner, girl. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you gotta think and you're saying exactly idea. what I say. Oh my God. Yes, because yes. yes. we think it's, it's my idea is it's in your heart, it's in your soul, and you think everyone feel the same way, and that's not always the case. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. I love it. Um, okay, we got this is the last question, guy, and then we gotta okay. go. 
All okay. right. Someone asked, can you speak more on working with the manufacturer and how you found the right one for your business model? And I think last, I got that some. was the last question, guys. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I got some uh, keynotes here. Like I said before, building those relationships. Samples is going to be your, your best friend if they allow that. Look out for minimums. That's that's going to be the tell-all right there if you're going to do business with somebody off, off the blank. Do they re return your calls? Are they responsive? Or do you have a representative? Some people are big enough, whereas you may have your own representative that's going to solely, not solely deal with you. They got other customers, but who can... You, you can call or email them and they can, you know, reply uh, to your question. So the same way people are vetting you, you want to vet your manufacturers. You want to have that list. Is this somebody who I want to be a partner with? Because they're your partners, okay? If they got a, a hot, first question you want to ask, what is your turnaround time? If I place an order for 100 units, what's normally your turnaround time. And hopefully they'll be honest with you to say, hey, that's going to be a month. That's going to be two months. That's going to be three weeks. Or, or we got a full staff and normally we get our words out in a couple of days. So that's already a plus with that particular manufacturer. Having that representatives, are they forthcoming? Do they give you a lot of information? Do they have the answers to your, to your questions? Do they have samples? All right. Do they have an elite list? Whereas you'll know about new products before anyone else. So, so things like that, their packaging. Also, you have some people that have an all in one. Not only do they have the product, not only that they're able to work with you and make, uh, do any changes, they able to label it as well for you. See, so that's one manufacturer that just knocked out two big things for you because some people are just going to send you the product plain. Now you have to send it back out to get it professionally labeled. So things like that, you want to keep in mind because that's going to really be the telltale of your timeline as we spoke of, of earlier. So those are the things that you want to look for as far as a, a, a great manufacturer. And I just want to make sure I'm covering everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and so um, did I see online that you actually do provide vendor lists? No. I don't have a vendor list. No, ma'am. I do have a, a great friend of mine. She's like my best friend. And she does. She, she uh, actually teaches people how to it's recipe for retail, how to get your recipes and things like that on the store shelves from your kitchen to cold packers to manufacturers to target shelves. And she provides vendor lists and things like that. Very great course that she offers as well. Okay. Well, I see that course for you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So again, Thank you so much, Angie. Thank you for coming on. Um, Thank you. Check out her products. Of course, you can order them on Amazon.com. Um, tell us the name of your products again. It's a Ravenel.com uh, is the website. If you go into Amazon and put in a Ravenel products, my first initial Ravenel, my last name, A-R-A-V-E-N-E-L products, my products uh, should come up. You'll see that I have an oil. I don't have the oil on display, but quick clean hair mist, the shampoo, and the conditioner. <laughs> All there right. Perfect. That's and it. How, how do we find you? How do they find you? On I'm, your public I'm, pages. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely find me. I put everything mainly under Angie Ravenel. A uh, Ravenel Products does have its own uh, Instagram and Facebook page. Excel continuing education.com is my website for the courses. Um, I also have a t-shirt brand company as well. So you guys, I'm, I'm in it to win it. I'm just, while I'm able, I'm just working this stuff out. So Angie Ravenel, a lot of stuff will come up for you. Perfect. All right. Thank you again, Angie. Um, this concludes <laughs> the Cure the Bag series, our product masterclass with, again, veteran uh, cosmetologist, photographer, 
product line developer, everything, <laughs> Miss Angie Ravenel. Thank, Thank you so you much. All. Thank all you. All right. Have a good one. All right. You all do the same.